This video is sponsored by Brilliant. If you decide to recreate anything, it is at your own risk and I do not accept the responsibility. Today, we will be making iodomethane. Iodomethane is commonly used as a methylating agent since it's an excellent substrate for SN2 substitution reactions. It is sterically open for attack by nucleophiles and iodide is a good leaving group. We are going to set up for a simple distillation as we will distill off the iodomethane after being formed. To start, we're going to add the DEA's favorite reagent, hydroiodic acid. This acid fumes quite a lot and I need to be careful when pouring it in. I should have removed the distillation setup initially as all the fumes traveled down the condenser when I poured it in. It did dissipate after some time and I waited until then before continuing. Even though I think the acid has a beautiful color, the DEA really doesn't like when people have this. I didn't know how the reaction would proceed, so I added 16 milliliters of methanol slowly to the reaction flask. Upon the addition, it fumed a little bit, so I went to cool the flask down with some cold water. I didn't have any ice, so cold water had to suffice. Did you guys notice that rhyme that I had? I didn't have any ice, so cold water had to suffice? Eminem better watch out right now. Once everything was added, I turned on the heat as well as stirring. We don't want our water to boil, but rather a hot water bath around 70 degrees Celsius. As things started to heat up, we can see the iodomethane slowly start to coat the inside of the flask. Once the reflux was going strong, the iodomethane started making its way towards the receiving flask as if it was my ex running away when I wanted attention. Iodomethane has a boiling point of 42 degrees Celsius and it should come over around that. Though, what's actually happening in this reaction? Let's dive into the beautiful world of chemistry. In this reaction, the function of the acid is to produce a protonated alcohol. The halide ion then displaces a molecule of water, which is a good leaving group from carbon. This produces an alkyl halide. In our case, iodomethane is formed. Primary alcohols and methanol react to form alkyl halides under acidic conditions by the SN2 mechanism. Iodomethane coming down the condenser is quite beautiful even though it exhibits moderate to high acute toxicity for inhalation and ingestion according to the USDA. Once most of the iodomethane has been distilled over, the rate at which it drops will reduce and that indicates that the reaction is almost over. At some point during the distillation, my temperature dropped to 38 degrees Celsius, but we still had our iodomethane coming over. I slightly turned the water bath up, however, this raised our temperature to 50 degrees Celsius and I stopped the distillation. I poured everything that was in the receiving flask into a separatory funnel and we can see that there are two separate layers. The bottom iodomethane layer is cloudy and the top layer, which I suspect to be water, is slightly yellow. I then added around 60 milliliters of a saturated sodium chloride solution with a little bit of sodium thiosulfate dissolved in it. This should react with any of the iodine that was giving the solution a yellow color and make sodium iodide. Once the solution has been shaken and vented, the iodomethane also clears up a bit due to the saturated sodium chloride pulling any water into the aqueous layer. This was then repeated two times and with the bottom layer being saved each time. I had to be careful not to get any on my skin as I really don't want it on there and it's, you know, kind of toxic. As more and more washes were done, the iodomethane really did start to clear up a lot, and it eventually was pretty much clear. Unfortunately, some of the iodomethane also decided to stay on the surface, and I really couldn't get to go to the bottom, so I just left it there. I should have got that vibrator that I used in one of my other videos. All I needed to do now was dry the iodomethane with some calcium chloride. This should dry up any of our product from any extra water. Roughly 11.5 milliliters of iodomethane was obtained, resulting in a 49.64% yield. This made me feel more worse than when I thought Wally died trying to save the plant from destruction. This was then stored over copper due to copper's ability to absorb any iodine released from degradation. It was also wrapped in aluminum foil to block out any light and should be stored in a temperature regulated area. The remaining reaction mixture was still quite acidic and fairly dark. I honestly think I should have let it distill at 38 degrees Celsius when it dropped rather than trying to get it back up to 42 degrees Celsius as it was still distilling over. I likely would have had a higher yield if I let the distillation continue at that temperature. I calculated the limiting reagent to be the hydroiodic acid, but I'm not too sure anymore. I even calculated the methanol to be in slight excess and the acid to be the limiting reagent.
I decided to destroy what I had remaining as it wasn't pure anymore. I did this by adding a solution of sodium hydroxide with a little bit of sodium thiosulfate dissolved in it. I swirled the flask around and added a little bit more of the sodium thiosulfate solution to it. Everything was put into a chemical waste container and all my glassware was washed with sodium hydroxide and a sodium thiosulfate solution. If I was to do this again, I would likely let it run a little bit longer even if it goes down to 38 degrees celsius. I would also try different procedures and see how much I can actually get out of it. I will be using the iodomethane to make aricoline HBr in the future. This is going to be a pretty cool synthesis and I can't wait to show you. I also want to give a huge shout out to Brilliant.org for sponsoring my video. If you haven't heard of Brilliant, let me tell you why it's one of my favorite websites. Brilliant is the best way to learn math and computer science interactively. Brilliant has thousands of lessons, from foundational and advanced math to chemistry, physics, data science, AI, and more, with new lessons added monthly. What sets Brilliant apart from anyone else is they have interactive lessons that are actually fun to do. I often get bored in a lot of my classes, but these lessons from Brilliant are actually hands-on and really help to visualize what I'm learning. I also get to track my progress, and I feel accomplished each time I complete a new lesson. There are so many categories to choose from, you would never run out of anything to learn. Some of my favorite lessons are the ones based in scientific thinking. I learn to think things through and ask the right questions. The best part is you learn much more effectively, which is great if you're a busy person. I do genuinely enjoy Brilliant as I get to visualize challenging problems and I get to learn something new every single day. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash chemdelic or click the link in the description. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. This is an insanely good deal and I really recommend you go click on that link. Huge thank you to all of my Patreon subscribers, you guys really do make the difference and I really can't thank you enough. If you want to see the hydroiodic acid video, that is available on my Patreon and it's available for all tiers. Other than that, Chemdelic out.